You're listening to DraftKings Network. Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Lebitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. We have breaking NFL news right now, Stu Gatz. Uh, Two bits of breaking NFL news, one of them bigger than the other. Mm. The least interesting, the least newsworthy of the two things is that Frank Reich has been fired in Carolina. Wow. I was watching part of that Carolina game and feeling bad about my general life decisions. Uh, (laughs) And Bryce Young looks more like a high school quarterback physically than almost anyone I've seen play the position where he looks so much smaller than everybody else. And when you're bad at offense, it really stands out how small you are. But that's the second most interesting piece of breaking NFL news. The first is that Will Levis has apologized on Twitter. He writes... I think I used capitulate instead of matriculate in the presser today. It's been killing me. (laughs) I apologize to all my former English teachers. Uh, My guy, we've been back channeling. You know, we use capitulation (laughs) often. Those are two very different phrases, though. You matriculate down the field. You don't capitulate down the field unless, of course, you're Carolina. You can't fire your head coach after he loses to Dan Marino, Tony, if you squint. (laughs) Uh, Tepper seems to be an awful owner. That uh, Frank Reich, there was a fascinating press conference, one of those meaningless midweek ones, where Frank Reich gave insight and did not look pleased and had to fight through his fake smile about detailing weekly meetings he has with David Tepper, where David Tepper gives his opinions about how things are going. I remember having a conversation about this with Joe Philbin. I think people don't have any earthly idea how meddlesome these rich people are because it's their toy and... All of that stuff gets kept secret. It never leaks because all of the people who have the information are afraid of being fired by the people with the power. I think people would be alarmed if they found out what these football owners are like as billionaires who are always used to getting their way and not used to just telling everybody, yeah, sure, just embarrass me publicly with my toy. I won't interfere at all. I won't get involved with any of your decision making. I'll just trust your expertise. I'm not saying you're wrong, but they would be shocked. Shocked by this, by the actions of billionaires if, who own a football was, team if who it was are writing reported, paychecks like if it, that? If it was reported, okay. yes, it'd be right. in, in the news every single day. Okay. We'd be talking about how could that guy be doing this. Okay. If people knew how bad this stuff actually was, because you're talking about the most entitled. You're talking about the most used to getting what they want. You're, you're talking about the most spoiled people surrounded by handlers who are doing so many things for them and have been doing so many things for them for decades. They're very used to it. And they become Jim Ursay, where Stugatz, when some of this stuff gets out in the public and you see just a, a small light on some of the crazy... You look at it and you're like, what is the matter with this person? Jim Ursay can't keep this stuff quiet because, you know, reportedly there are drugs in the car and there's cash in the car. But First Take was talking about this the other day and Jim Ursay couldn't keep quiet. Jim Ursay couldn't keep this to himself. The other owners look at Jim Ursay and even by their standards, he's a little bit unhinged. So let's put up the tweets We'll put them up in a second, but I, I do want to talk a little bit about the breaking news in Carolina because. Tepper hasn't been there long, and the things that have hamstrung that franchise over the last few years have been (laughs) Tepper calls. The trade for Bryce Young was a Tepper call. Paying Matt Rule the money that they paid Matt Rule and readjusting and establishing a new high watermark for coaching salaries was a Tepper call. None of this stuff is working out. Frank Reich went back to play calling duties. It seems as though there's a real meddlesome owner here, and that in years previous has worked with Al Davis and then it stopped working. In years previous it worked with Jerry Jones and then it stopped working. It's never worked with David Tepper and the sample size is growing. They're screwed if Bryce Young doesn't figure it out. And Frank Reich has a pretty proud track record of making it work with quarterbacks. 
you don't have what now is the number one draft pick next year in the greatest quarterback class in several years. You don't have a shot at Caleb Williams. You are stuck with Bryce Young, who looks like a high school footballer compared to some of the bodies that are out there on the field. There is no fix for a meddlesome owner that just can't get it right. You're, you're stuck with it. Why not take another quarterback? You can't. You don't have your first round the draft Bears pick. Have their pick. Oh, the Bears have their pick. That's right. The Bears have two of the top just four picks that. in the NFL what happened? draft. What happened? Were you not looking? He was just firing right up the take. He was looking right at me. Well, well, firing right you know what? I, I, I don't know if you said that. You should roll the tape. No, back. I definitely said it twice. Okay, well, say it. Well, I, don't. I apologize. Just in case the audience was confused. Yeah, exactly. My bad. I mean, why does he think matriculate was the right word? Because that just means to enroll in a university. Well, I heard this multiple times yesterday. And you guys know what the announcer is talking about every time they say this, extracurricular activity. Oh, I love that. <laughs> what do you think they mean by that? Depends on what, you know, what, what's going on. Depends what's, yeah. I love some extracurriculars. Is there a pile? Is there, you know, is there a fumble pile? What's happening in that fumble pile? I mean, are unnecessary things happening in that fumble I, I pile? I don't understand when this became the go-to cliche. I think of extracurricular activities as you're in a youth group after class. I don't think of it as guys dodgeball. shoving each other. It's not even dodgeball. I think of it as sort of I'm in, in debate. I'm, I've got an extracurricular activity after school. I've got a debate club that I'm in. Matriculate is a great word, and so is moxie, but they're almost exclusively used on the gridiron. These are great words to describe things that you see in everyday life, I, no, but wait you a only minute. hear them during football wait, I don't think I think matric matriculate is something I only associate with school, and because Hank Stram said it a million years ago talking about what a football team does on a drive, it is now also associated with football, but matriculate is school. Put it on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. That. I thought that it's just you going down the field. Exactly. That, <laughs> brother, I think I'm right here. What do you mean enrolling in There is only one meeting for it, and that is you wait having a nice chunky 12 play drive <laughs> at four and a half yards per clip that's how you matriculate you're you're saying you had never you never heard the other usage no, of matriculate not even the other it's the it, there's it, there's dictionaries with definitions uh, for words that's what words mean huh matriculate means this to go a down phone. this isn't a duck i can't just say that my duck no matriculate means to go down the field four and a half yards at a time yep. that's what that means it's a, a big third down too oh you seven, gotta have a few of those conversions a fourth down too i feel like it uh, yeah, now it's days, a fourth in right, these days yeah and like three four yard outs from adam thielen yeah. that's how you matriculate he sucked yesterday who adam thielen yeah dude you can't judge anything on that offense with I can't uh, Bryce Young. zero points in fantasy he's, he's actually sucked. had a good season thielen I yeah mean, he's, he's, he's considered all things is, considered yeah I said yesterday. <laughs> Great season. He's the only Carolina <laughs> Panther who's doing anything. Let's get to the Ursay tweets here, though, Stugatz, because this is an NFL owner, and I will say to the audience again, if the behavior of NFL owners or sports owners, if all of it got out, you would be appalled at how it is these people behave. So First Take is doing a segment on Jim Ursay, and now at this point, anytime Ursay's name is mentioned as the Colts owner, uh, the word association is dollars in the car, cash in the car, and pills in the car. One of the things he said in his, uh, I don't know, diatribe on Twitter is he usually has a lot more cash than that on him. That's a low amount. That $29,000 is a low amount. Mm -hmm. And this is Look, if I were a PR agent, I would have told him to do this. He's like, I'm always giving my money to people who are unhoused and people who need it. I've always got a lot of cash on me, and I'm just <laughs> handing it out. It's a heady play, man. So he says a first take. First take, you're going to get your ass sued because there was no alcohol, no illegal drugs. $29,000 is low for me to be carrying in 2014 arrest. I give away $2,000 to $10,000 to the homeless and need it on the street all the time, and passing it on will make the world better. Heart emoji. <laughs> Solid grammar. Uh, let's see the other tweets, though, because uh, and on first take, the woman who preceded Stephen A., how dare you pretend to know me? I don't know your name and I don't care to. Angry face emoji. If my black mother, Dorothy, was still alive, you'd be in some big hot water, hot and water, capitalized, Exclamation point. You are mean and ugly. Upside down smiley face emoji. You're 
used incorrectly, a nothing burger. Nothing burger is ca capitalized. And what is that emoji? What is, the, what is that emoji? That is a slightly disappointed emoji. <laughs> it's you are? Yes, it's uh. you are a nothing burger. Uh, Steve Maybe Dox. you ran out of characters. <laughs> <laughs> got to do what you got to do. You're right. What are the other owners thinking when Jim Mercer says that and does that? Are they like, go, What do these Jim. emojis mean? <laughs> go, Jim. Go get them. Black what? mother. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I think it means what he's saying it means. Uh -huh. I don't know what it means, though. It, it, his black mother was a disciplinarian, is what it means. Mm -hmm. She'd be in hot water. Again, the mismanaged co Colts have as many wins as the Bills. They're a playoff team today. <laughs> the Bills have a 15% chance of making the playoffs. The Colts are firmly in the playoffs. I just Googled Jim Ursay's mother, and her name is not Dorothy. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Harriet Ursay. Huh. Yeah. She is uh, from Hungarian Jewish descent. Hmm. Okay, that really just stops us in our tracks. Uh, well, there's a third tweet there. My grandparents came across Ellis Island with just the, third, uh, the shirt on their back, penniless, and escaping Jewish concentration camps. I grew up in a horrible home where both my brother and sister died in a car crash in 1971. That is a crying emoji. I work for my living, bought 30% of the Colts bank loan, and now a football emoji. Hmm. Now, I, I did find where Jim Ursay has provided more context in the past. About Apparently, he was asked some follow-ups. Dor about tweeted, Dorothy? And he tweeted about okay. it. Yeah, Dorothy yeah. Bloodsaw yeah. was his black mom. I guess he has a black mom and a white mom, which is where the context is lacking from that first tweet that you read. That's he has, where he has two moms. It says, she carried me in the house in Lincolnwood, Illinois on 1959 June. I swear this is how it's written. And raised me in the light of Christ. I would be dead if not for her unconditional love. She showed me that Jesus Jesus was my savior. I owe her everything. So he, when he said my black mother Dorothy, that was just the designation he applied to differentiate he between the mothers. And Harriet. I mean, do we know if she's black? We do know that. Dorothy, I'm going to take him for his word there. <laughs> Harriet is definitely not. <laughs> hey, it's Mike. Hut, hut, whistles, penalty flags, touchdowns, rah, rah. Love all that stuff about football season. But you know what I love the best about football season? It's camaraderie I get when I toast the beautiful white can that holds the key to making football amazing. I'm talking, of course, about Miller Lite. I make it Miller time every time it's football time. And I'm never left disappointed because it is the perfect beer to pair with our national obsession. From kickoff to the final whistle, you just can't go wrong with a Miller Lite in your hand. It's the only light beer with a taste worthy of football. What's the point of having a beer if it doesn't taste like, well, beer? Thankfully, Miller Lite checks all the flavor boxes, and it's only got 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce serving. This season, do what I do. Crack open a light beer that hits your taste buds so hard, you feel it in your heart. And you can scream touchdown and hoorah and all that stuff. Make it Miller time all season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Don Lebertard. It's been a lovely cruise. Oh, man. That, that's my out, outro. That's, uh, you know, as my casket is being lowered. Jesus. Uh, you know, I'll have been cremated a week before, but we'll do the casket thing just for show. And as my casket is being lowered, <laughs> Wait a well, we will, empty we casket, say, yeah, it'll Closed? be empty. You know, just for show. We're well, what's do that. the redundancy there? Uh, you know, I mean, we're going to put on a public display. Yeah, naturally. You know. Stugats. What do you do with the ashes? Um, you You're know, going on a lovely cruise. Exactly. Maybe we'll throw them uh, over. My wife will throw them uh, overboard. I would as assume she's necking with her new husband. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats. Every week at about this time of year, Stugatz, I come in here and talk about the magic of football. They give you that Bills-Eagles game, and it is camouflage for what was a sewage system of a one o'clock hour. <laughs> Just terrible football all, all over the place. Uh, Saturday was better than Sunday this week, so I do want to talk about some of the Saturday games because... 
the NFL has a way of giving you that Bills Eagles game, and it just washes everything away. Stugatz, that one o'clock hour Oof. was terrible. Like yep. it was just a bunch of teams playing, and it felt like all of the games were Giants Patriots. Because it was so bad, Dan, I watched an entire football game because I had no interest in any of the other games. Not Giants Patriots, not Colts and Buccaneers, even though the Colts are a playoff team. I watched Jaguars Texans and I watched and I know he lost but I watched CJ Stroud the patience the confidence the mobility the ability to pick up blitzes Dan that kid is so good dare I say great you're and late I, you're late to this party people have been doing oh, this no, for, a, for a month I know I am but because I watched an entire game I got to see every single play the red zone has kind of ruined football because they go to, like, highlights. You see the best of these guys, right? You see the best of Justin Herbert. You see the best of Joe Burrow. You don't see some of the mistakes they make because they don't highlight those mistakes. When you watch an entire football game, you're able to see that Justin Herbert, he's not that mobile, and he doesn't pick up blitzes. He does not pick them up as quickly as C.J. Stroud. In fact, I'm not certain anyone picks them up as quickly as C.J. Stroud. I know they lost, Dan, but he's great, and they're going to be great for the next 15 years. Three weeks ago, Justin Herbert had the best game against the blitz that any quarterback has ever had uh, because uh, that was the Ravens' defense last night that did that. Herbert hasn't looked like that all season. Right, do it every week. I mean, Outside of Jags, Texans, I don't know if you could have handpicked five worse games than this. Far, I'm just looking games. at them like there's not a good like Mike just said Colts Bucks wasn't 10. I'm just like if that's the next best one, yeah. woof. It, it's not only a lot of bad football, it's a lot of bad football with a lot of teams that can't keep players healthy. So when he mentioned Burrow, God, this was funny yesterday. The announcers were trying so hard, Stugatz, so hard to teach me <laughs> to care about Browning. Tell the story. And one of the things that they did, this happened twice, right? He's like, one of the, I don't know who the announcers were on that game, but it was funny because this happened in sequence, just like I'm telling you. The announcers were saying that Browning, and I laughed at my television when they said this, had the same vibe as Joe Burrow. <laughs> and they kept just arguing. Same initials. Kept arguing, kept arguing on, on behalf of his vibe, his vibe, and then he rolls to his left, holds on to the ball too long, and gets sacked. <laughs> then they come back and try to convince me that Browning – has unique arm angles, and he's got all the arm angles, all the arm angles tackled. Next play, interception. The mystery of Jake Browning. <laughs> they put up 10 points. So I'm not going to talk about Sunday. I'm going to talk about Saturday. I'm not going to talk about the football of Saturday first, even though I'm going to get to that Michigan-Ohio State game and the Auburn-Alabama game. The game. Which the one? Iron Bowl. Which one? The first one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because Auburn, Alabama felt pretty big at the end of that one. Massive. And I would kind of like to... Six win Auburn team. <laughs> I'd like to watch Alabama against Michigan, though, because I don't totally trust Michigan. <laughs> but I don't want to talk about the football uh, just yet. I want to talk about a couple of the entrances. I want to start with Oklahoma. Okay. Stugatz, explain to me. What has happened here when they're coming out of the tunnel and the fire extinguishers are going off and Brent Venables gets, uh, it seems like he gets run over by his first player because it feels like he's the first one to fall coming out of the tunnel. And the player notices, who, what's he holding there? Is it a GoPro? Uh, that? A sledgehammer? Or, or is that a GoPro? I think that's a GoPro. I think it was a GoPro. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so that guy. Has, so there, 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 there is video somewhere. Of, Somebody, one of the players there, has to stop and be like, "Stop!" Well, they look back, but you can't stop the uh, the running onto the field. You're just gonna have to persevere. It does. The trickle effect is great, though. <laughs> that is great. We have another angle. He was okay. That's what we can say. Venables? We're laughing because he was okay. It will take a lot more than that to kill Brent Venables, it I will. promise you. Okay? That's a great call, Sue got. He reanimate. He probably did die, and he just reanimated. The best exactly. is when he finally emerges. He's just like a beaten man. 
I was going to argue on behalf of the exclusive video of that initial number 94 coming through the smoke with the GoPro that would have Venables going down, but you can't video anything in that smoke. You're not going to get anything. There he is. <laughs> but once, once... Much stronger. I mean. <laughs> once people start going down, though... One of the worst places to be is in smoke where you cannot see what's in front of you. It looked like the scene when Mufasa dies. Oh. The stampede where Mufasa, all of a sudden you just see a big plumage of smoke. It's like, is he in there? Is he okay? I would like uh, the video team to find, and I have not asked for this before, so it's going to take a second, but just an assortment of videos of peewee football players, seven and eight years old, trying to run through some uh, some paper and always get, -cut that thing. getting stuck. Like they, they don't have the strength or the momentum to break through the paper, so they just start log jamming. I didn't expect it with 300-pound people. I thought to myself, good Lord, what a terrifying place for Venables to be to know that that smoke is behind him <laughs> and to know how many players are coming like he's going it's going to feel like he's being run over by bison i thought to myself that's exactly where venables wants to be <laughs> go ahead run over me <laughs> it's it it's the way he got ready for the tcu game watch me watch me score 69 points here after getting trampled in the tunnel the show goes on though yeah. college football it's like he, our coach might be dead at the bottom of this thing, but we're running out of this tunnel right now. I mean, the, smoke. The, the guy with the GoPro that knows that his coach, an older man, was in front of him. Keeps running. Keeps running. <laughs> That's right. Keeps running. He's like, what am I going to do? Get trampled as well? But that was not the best entrance of the weekend. We have a video of uh, kids uh, failing to go through. Oh wow, that was that was uh, was quick. Yes, uh, I I have seen, chaos here. I have seen a number of these. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> break the paper. Yeah. Look at the coach here pointing in the right direction. He gets upset here. He's like, oh come on, oh, the kids. I mean, <laughs> he takes his hat off in disappointment. We worked on this. <laughs> That's <laughs> what it felt totally like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right there, guys. No, <laughs> no. Oh, we worked on this. Here comes the hat. hat comes Here off. Goes. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get enough of those for me. There are many of them. They are they are replete throughout Pee Wee football. But Stugatz, explain to me, please, what it is that's happening here, where the Mississippi State coach, whose name I do not know, <laughs> is coming out onto the field for the Egg Bowl. He is coming out, leading his players onto the field. Now, Mississippi State is a special kind of terrible. Every time I look up, they're scoring three or seven points this season. Mm -hmm. They cannot score in this particular game. After this rousing entrance, they scored seven points and lost the Egg Bowl by ten. <laughs> but here is the coach of their team on an ATV, on a four-wheeler, for what I can tell is no discernible reason. This team out onto the field tonight and give them a little juice. Cole is with the Urm head coach. <laughs> coach Knox, nothing is normal about the Egg Bowl. Why are you bringing the team out on this four-wheeler? This is about handling adversity. Opposition. When you face things that's tough in life, this is a life lesson. Right? And this is what we learned right? in 11 days I've been here. This is a life lesson. And that it is. He told me pregame he and only that it is a four-wheeler once before. That, that was is, in the locker room before the game last week. His name is so Greg Knox, right and when Greg he Knox says, what is the life lesson, the life lesson is that when men get power, they get ATVs. He's also no longer the Mississippi State head coach. That's right. How is going out on that thing <laughs> adversity? That, it's easier to go out there What's the when life you have lesson? something... They, well, the adversity is he coaches Mississippi State, and they're not very good. And <laughs> look at these men behind me. You, you want to know what the adversity is? Look, it's right behind me. It's all these guys gathered up behind my ATV. Yeah, I guess the adversity was provided with some context by the commentators by saying that's the only only the second time he's ever been on an ATV. The first time was in the locker room before, so he's he's overcoming. <laughs> that coach. He's like, honestly, I don't know why I'm on this thing either. They just gave it to me. And I'm new here, so I said, all right. Uh, he just putt-putted along, too. That didn't really inspire anybody. That's <laughs> well, his second time. I, he's not going to do that He's got to kick it into high gear for the Egg Bowl. <laughs> Been here 11 days. Yeah. They, play, they came out flat. And you have Greg Knox to, to blame for that. <laughs>
It reminds me of Tubby Smith trying to come on the court at Kentucky on a motorcycle when he clearly hadn't ridden one, and he just slid That's out. That's a dangerous like, yeah, game, I mean, man. so is this. <laughs> Less dangerous, admittedly, because it's four-wheeler and it's, uh, and it's safe, but he didn't have confidence. Uh, he also, though, had what he was going to say in his head already, and it didn't matter what the question was, because I don't understand what he's saying when he says, this is a life lesson. I wanted a follow-up there. Coach, what's the life lesson? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to be a head coach. And if I, <laughs> I knew that if this was my only shot, I was coming out on an ATV. Uh, I'm watching uh, the Tubby Smith video for the first time. He was oh, moving. It's great. It's great. <laughs> he's going like, no, he's, he's going like 15 he's miles wearing, an hour. That's because he didn't know how to drive one. <laughs> he's wearing a leather jacket. <laughs> Honestly, with how it ended, it could have gone a lot worse. Right. He could have ended up fly- going into the stands. That's like, how you stop when you don't know how to drive a motorcycle. I don't know if, Scottson, I don't uh, mean this is correction. I'm just generally uh, not sure that drive is the correct verb there for a motorcycle. Like, Ride? It's not, I, it's, not what do dri- you do? it's not drive a boat, for example, and it's not drive a, mo- a, a motorcycle. Uh, I don't think, put it on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show, uh, is the correct verb for what you do on a motorcycle drive. Hmm. Apparently Reddit Levitard says show. you ride a motorcycle. You ride the hog, yeah. Okay. Uh the 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 four wheelers to God's have you ever been on one? No. Uh I have wrecked one. I have uh, How dangerous. Uh, I, I went into a, a whole it was life lesson. By I, sitting on it? I what happened? <laughs> Yes. Oh. Yeah, I sat on it, and the wheels just came off because I'm so fat. Oh. Is he, st- is he staring at me? <laughs> He's staring at it. It's just a lifelong trauma is all. Like the first time I ever tried to get on one, the wheels went rolling into traffic because it collapsed under the, uh, under the size of my weight. The Dan LaPetard Show with Stugatz is sponsored by BetterHelp. The holiday season can stir a wide range of emotions, and the specific emotions experienced can vary from person to person. While many people associate the holidays with feelings of joy, warmth, and togetherness, it's essential to recognize that the holiday season can also evoke various other emotions, both positive and negative. Adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Having something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Remember that it's okay to take care of yourself during the holiday season. Prioritizing self-care and managing stress is essential for enjoying the holidays and maintaining your well-being. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com DLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash D-O-B. Peloton is your stage to work out like nobody's watching. A Peloton in your house means you make the rules. You exercise when you want, how you want, sing as loud as you want, wear what you want, or nothing at all. When you spend your hard-earned money, you don't just buy a Peloton. You open the door for you to do you. And nothing beats the feeling of exercising on your own terms, with or without clothes on. With up to $700 off your Peloton Bike Plus purchase, there's no better time to bring one home for the holidays and work out like nobody's watching. Peloton is your stage to unleash the real you, the clothing optional you. You want to try a climb or a low-impact ride class? You can. Or hop off Ike and pivot the screen to do a bar, strength, or yoga class? You can. Make yourself uncomfortable in the comfort of your own space and your own skin, free of judgment, free of inhibitions. It's a fitness entertainment mashup that'll have you singing at the top of your lungs, sweating, and moving like you'd never do with others around you. Peloton's best offer of the season. Head to OnePeloton.com slash deals. All access membership separate. Terms apply. Don Lebatard. All of us who were watching college football elevated everything the weekend was because we missed football in general so very much. You didn't watch the ending of UTEP Jacksonville State. It was awesome. A dizzy. <laughs> Boom. Mm-hmm. Stugatz. <laughs> Such a lane for you. Just everything in college football is awesome. Any is. single thing that happens, she gets deliriously happy about. Don't it's you miss sitcom. viewing sports through that, that prism, though? Like, I'm envious of Lucy. Like, I wish that I could still be happy. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz.
All right, you guys were lamenting how bad the one o'clock window was. And I, I don't think really you're applying the necessary context in that we got four games before the normal one o'clock window on a Sunday. So naturally, it's going to be a little diluted. It's not like the games that we got in advance were kind of great. Yeah. Detroit Green Bay was, I guess, interesting, but all blowouts on Thanksgiving. But then we were given a prize for the first time ever. Amazon was going to carry a Black Friday game. Yeah. And before the season, it looked like it was going to be great. Tua versus Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers and that Achilles has nuked the primetime scheduling because you can't exactly flex out the New York market. So we're stuck with the mystery of Tim Boyle. <laughs> Did we solve that one? Yeah. I mean, you can see why he's starting because he has such great command of Nathaniel Hackett's <laughs> offense. He's starting this upcoming week, too. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. After that performance, you can't. You can't. <laughs> Trevor it. Simeon, yeah. they have three quarterbacks, one of which we've only seen move the ball. Like, Trevor Simeon's the only guy that I think we've. If you've played fantasy, like, eh, maybe I take a fly little flyer yeah. on Trevor Simeon, but okay, they're not going to play Trevor Simeon. They're going to trot Tim Boyle over there. During the game, the most interesting thing happened, and it wasn't over the broadcast, although there is something from the broadcast I'd like to get into. Mike McDaniel, who was winning after for much of that game, and then at halftime, you had one moment where the Jets could have maybe taken control of that game. Oh, was that great? And, <laughs> and on a Hail Mary, they end up throwing a pick six. So oh. Just uh, so people have the context, uh, the Dolphins are at the time winning 10-6, and with two seconds left in the half, Tua throws his second interception. And if you're doubting the Dolphins, you are watching how they will lose in the playoffs. If you're a Dolphin doubter, you're watching uh, Tua have something close to the golf that game that's going to also end whatever happens in Detroit, where you can see from here how the game's going to end. Two seconds left in the half. He's thrown a couple of terrible passes. This is the second of them. Right. But the game goes on. Dolphins in full control. And I can see from this video that we're about to queue up uh, that the score is 27 to 6. And Jets fans, God bless them, they think that this is a great time to talk trash to the head coach on the opposing sideline. Because They're, because he's near the heater, right? Because he's from Miami and he's a wimp who is uh, who, who needs a heater. And because we're Jet fans. It, yeah, he's not from <laughs> Miami, but he is wearing joggers and the ankles are probably a little nippy in the, in the cold weather. But this is what happens when Jets fans try to talk to Mike McDaniel for standing next to a heater and give him some guff. <laughs> I am cold and also winning. The only coach in the league who does that. There's not another. Maybe Sirianni. Sirianni. Maybe Sirianni. Sirianni would do it. Yeah. Sirianni. Although Sirianni wouldn't admit that he is cold. He would just stand there. He wouldn't go near the heater. That was the opposite of what the Bills players were doing with Eagles fans after the game. Did you guys see that video? There was one where like a couple players had like they had to pull a guy back. Yeah, the uh, Eagle. I mean, it was it was honestly the Eagles fans were being jerks. Yeah, the NFL is investigating stay away from that. that. The like, NFL is investigating the that. The players because... made their way over there where you gotta just not do that. But the the one interesting nugget. I from... would say the fans also need to not do that. I agree. The the one interesting nugget from the prime broadcast was maybe Al Michaels. Uh, I mean, he he added a Friday, so now he's called the football game on all a pro football game on all seven days of the week. That's cool. Al Michaels found the energy on that Hail Mary. I think and, not really. And he Not also really. did the signature thing of uh, talking about the spread at the end of the game, trying to keep it interesting. <laughs> but he did provide a, a, a cool little story from talking. He's fascinated by Mike McDaniel. You could see that throughout the broadcast. And Mike McDaniel was asked for a story about his time at the in the Arena Football League in Sacramento. And he's like, well, there was this one time I was a running backs coach. And one of my players was dancing with this uh, beautiful woman on, on the dance floor. And I told him, hey, get out of there or you're going to get cut. And then Mike McDaniel cuts in, and then the story goes that the woman that he was dancing with ended up being his wife. We have a guest booker here, Matt Sullivan, that was doing research on this and looking at the roster of that Sacramento Arena Football League. And one of his running backs was John David Washington, wow. the son of Denzel Washington. Wow. That's funny. I Thank asked you, Sullivan. Mm. I thought I thought today would be the day to get that running back <laughs> without realizing he's going to be hard to get. 
if he's Denzel Washington's son. I just wanted some arena league running back who was dying to tell the story of Mike McDaniel stealing his girl on the dance floor. Al Michaels did enjoy telling that story. Uh, Mike Ryan, I don't know what broadcast you were listening to. I will let my announcers age with grace. I don't want to fire them. But I do understand the criticism of Al Michaels sounding a little lethargic because Al Michaels did say that the Javon Holland interception was as crazy a thing as you will ever see. He did not announce it that way. <laughs> he, he said it was the craziest thing you'll ever see. So technically he did announce it that way, but he did not meet the moment in tenor and tone with what it is that we were watching, which the craziness of a Hail Mary. Did you guys see how many yards Garrett Wilson ran on that play? No. 174. <laughs> Get out of here. 174 <laughs> yards Garrett Wilson ran on that play, according to the next-gen stats, because he went from one goal line to the other and got there a yard late. Because uh, Boyle can't tackle. That mystery also solved. <laughs> nice juke movie put on him, though. <laughs> it did. It broke down Boyle. But Al Michaels has seen it all. So you expect him to get excited for every single thing? I mean, he hasn't seen that. None of us have. He, <laughs> right. he Not himself, on a Friday, he, he himself <laughs> said, said, yeah. said that it's the craziest thing you'll ever see. Not in football. Just the craziest thing you'll ever see. There was also one thing that wasn't mentioned in all the things that Al was talking about, where Tyreek Hill scores a touchdown and then gives the ball to his wife in the stands that I was like, ooh, I hope that's his wife. I'm not 100% sure. We were like, oh. Someone, wow. didn't, someone you, didn't watch Hard Knocks. No, you can't guess there, though. Tony's right. You cannot guess. That's <laughs> not a guessing that game. Yeah. Yes. Season veteran, Did though. you guys watch Hard Knocks finally? Yes. We did, yeah. It was his wife's fault, right? The nachos. She definitely knocked agree. it down. He even came out and said as much. He said it was 100% her fault. She pulled down the nachos. Kenny Vaccaro's sister. There were a couple of interesting things about Hard Knocks, uh, and I do, I've always uh, said that uh, it's kind of the illusion of access because of how edited it is, but it's more access than you usually get with that league. And the way the Dolphins talked about Max Crosby as a team, like the way they were talking about him, I found startling, even though I know those things are so. I'm just used to the respect being begrudging in the locker room. They don't want to say a guy's too good. But on Max Crosby, they're all like, yeah, he never gets tired. And he's a problem. And he's their best player. <laughs> and all of us, everybody, everybody who's here, offense, kickers, everybody, I need you worried about Max Crosby. We've told you before, Max Crosby is terrifying. He has two X's in his name. Should be three X's. Right. Max Crosby over the weekend the rare doubtful designation yeah. and still started and he got a sack on Patrick Mahomes <laughs> he's incredible I want to be Max Crosby when I grow up do you really yeah I think the most terrifying guy in the league Max Crosby is up there but I think Chris Jones is probably the most terrifying guy I in mean the league. Miles Garrett when Miles Garrett leaves in a sling I'm like people shouldn't be doing what Miles Garrett is doing for a living if Miles Garrett can leave in a sling <laughs> That person cannot have his arms hurt. But there are a number of scary people in that sport right now. Do you guys believe Tua when he says, I'm not watching any of that on Hard Knocks? He's not watching any of it, he says. I do believe him. Yeah. I believe him. Yeah. 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 He seemed innocent and a little corny Ooh. in the episode. Ooh. A little, he seemed to me, all, honestly, like he's more fun than he leads on. Like he's capable of being like down and having a good time. And then when he's in front of the microphone, he like, Turns it a little off. too excited. He about, wants to give you nothing. A little too excited about Secret Santa for me. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I'm a big, I'm a big time guy. I need time. But he also already had everybody's gifts. Yeah, which and Mike was White did not let that slide. Well, no, it was confusing to me because <laughs> how is he a big time guy? And also, do you know how Secret Santa works? You shouldn't have bought everyone gifts if you're only going to get one person. Like, what's going on? Well, here? I think the quarterback gets stuff for the offensive line. I think that's what he was doing there. Do you remember that weird Rinaldi piece? where they, they profiled Tua and they kind of made it seem like a tearjerker, even though part of the nuggets in that piece was like, yeah, my dad would get the belt every time I threw a, a pick six. And then the piece would keep going, and you're like, wait a second, did he actually say that? I think they said that his dad made him go to Alabama. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris, if you're Sam Howell, do you get your offensive line gifts? Yes. Well, I get what you're saying. <laughs> but not good gifts. <laughs> what are the bad gifts? I'm trying to think just what like a, a candle. Like a, what's the laziest <laughs> gift? The most, the most unscented <laughs> gift card to like <laughs> chilies. <laughs> no, no, my wife and I do that every year. We'll give a gift that's right on the line between insult and thoughtful, and it's like you got to guess. <laughs> for, is, the, is, for the people that we don't actually care about, we didn't give this any thought. But you're getting a gift, so is it an insult? 
Is oh, Aaron or on was the I hook? thinking of you? Does Aaron have to buy his line presence? Because he's obviously the richest of the quarterbacks on his team, but he played four plays. I don't right. know how that works. <laughs> they got him hurt. <laughs> Well, speaking of hurt, Jalen Phillips gets hurt on that turf, too. I know. That Achilles. Billy hates that turf, man. Tony doesn't want to talk about Everybody it. Everybody does. It. I mean, Holland called it trash after the game, and everyone says of that it seems stupid in a multi-billion dollar, in, in, in a multi-billion dollar sport that we're still ransacking human bodies because we can't get the field right because it's shit. Like, that, I mean, that doesn't seem – they should be sparing no expense on making it most probable in the violent sport that you can't get hurt – with a non-contact injury because the turf is shit. Well, there's also like certain fields that people just get hurt on. Yeah. Like MetLife, people get hurt on. Cincinnati, people get hurt on. Right. I heard San Francisco also. A lot of people get hurt on that one. Why can't you do something about this? I mean, you know, the are going to get hurt. The well, San Francisco they, one's just rumors, though. They, well, it was it was Mike Fuentes, I think, that told me. Oh, yeah. oh okay. So Here's the thing. You're going with or, it. You know what? I think it was Gino that told me. <laughs> it was a it little was about a lot. One of the Fuentes is. The the turf at MetLife is the cause of a lot of. Achilles injuries, but it has me watching the Jalen Phillips injury in a different way where you see that rubber band Achilles kind of snap when they did the replay of it, and I was like, oh my god, I lost my mind. I have a very irrational fear that my Achilles is going to snap like that, like walking up the stairs. Or like doing something normal, all of a sudden it's going to be like because Jalen Phillips, all he really did was push off. Yeah. He didn't do anything done crazy. done that a thousand times just in the last week. It's, it's your it job. Snaps. It's how you start your job. It's like the part where you don't get hurt. Can someone just tell us, up. though, for sure, like, was that just bound to happen to him? And it's just a matter of when? Is it the field? Well, he, like, I feel like question. everyone's kind of right. getting mad at the, the field, but it's like nobody knows. Well, the Jets just changed the turf and the Giants because they both play home games there. They just changed it to field turf. And it got good reviews before in, the season. In this particular case, Chris, and I don't know exactly, obviously, but when things start breaking on your body, then other things start also breaking on your body. And Jalen Phillips has had an assortment. And th these things might not actually be interconnected. But when someone gets dismissed as injury prone, I tend to just assign it to if other things that are connected to that aren't working correctly, eventually that's not going to work correctly someday too. Well, there's a thing called the posterior chain, right? Which everything in the back is connected to each other, right? Your back is connected to your hip, hip connected to your hamstrings, all hip the way down. bones connected exactly. to Exactly. So if he has something like in his back that traveled down to his hamstring that went to his calf, all of a sudden that thing snaps, it can happen. I mean, there's just so many injuries on that turf, but it should be noted that Jalen Phillips is a player that once in his college career had to medically retire. Yeah. So he's had a lot of stuff going on his body, uh, with his body. So I guess that theory does hold some water, but the theory that holds more water is all the injuries and all the stars that have succumbed to that turf in MetLife. They have a real problem. That is an injury that really hurts the Miami Dolphins because their pass rush is made a lot less effective when he is not a part of it. But I want to accentuate and put the spotlight on how poorly Chris Cody uh, did that particular song. The toe want... bones connected yeah, to the now. foot bone. The foot bones connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bones connected to the... Leg bone now, shake them with skeleton bones. I don't know. I don't really know the end of the song. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that part either, see? The Dan LaPetard Show with Stugatz is sponsored by BetterHelp. The holiday season can stir a wide range of emotions, and the specific emotions experienced can vary from person to person. While many people associate the holidays with feelings of joy, warmth, and togetherness, it's essential to recognize that the holiday season can also evoke various other emotions, both positive and negative. Adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Having something to look forward to to make you feel grounded and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Remember that it's okay to take care of yourself during the holiday season. Prioritizing self-care and managing stress is essential for enjoying the holidays and maintaining your well-being. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash D-O-B.